come check out the Connection Games and Comics. We have the largest selection of War Machine and Hordes miniatures in the Lower Mainland. War Machine Wednesdays and Sundays, with tables and terrain to play your game. Welcome to Wargamer Shut Up and Paint. I wanted to stop, start off this series kind of by going through some of the basics um, for people specifically that haven't had a lot of experience painting or haven't painted at all. Now, one of the things, one of the major questions that people come up with is, well, what do I need to, to paint? I mean, you need a paintbrush, you need some paint, what do we do? Um, I have got a video completed to um, an unboxing for um, a paint set that I feel is a really good foundational starting point for painters. But I want to talk about the different options in paintbrushes. When I started painting, um, I started with whatever I could get my hands on. And at the time, being you know uh, a younger kid, I think I was 11 or 12, not a lot of money, I started off with the dollar store paintbrushes. Um, I think a lot of people get it into their head that in order to have high quality paint jobs, they need high quality equipment. And although high quality equipment does help, it's not where I would start. So what we have here is we have the hobby highlighting brush that we had in the miniature paint set, which um, holds a reasonably fine point. It will be handy for doing things like dotting eyes, but little else in my opinion. Uh, maybe if you wanted to draw like thin lines on things, that's not a bad option. But um, the most important thing about a paintbrush uh, well, there's a few different important things about a paintbrush, but we're just going to, to go into the very basic stuff, is does it hold a point and can it hold a fair amount of paint? So when you're painting something, you want to have um, a brush, number one size is pretty good if you, if you want to know. Um, but if you just look at the tip of the brush, you maybe get it wet, you see how well it holds a point. Um, that's going to be a really good indication as to whether or not that brush is going to work for our purposes. So let's take a look at what we have here. Here, so we, we've taken a look at the hobby um, highlighting brush, which um, again, it, it will hold a reasonable point. It's not too bad, it's a brand new brush, but um, here we have the uh, Games and Gears Pro Studio brushes. Now these came in a Kickstarter, and um, I don't know if you can tell, but they are not, they're not great. Um, when they when they created this Kickstarter, they they indicated they were you know professional quality and they were great. And I heard people talking about how they how they were a competitor to the Windsor Newton Series Seven, which um, I don't know where they were getting their information. So maybe there was a mix up or something, but that's very much not the case. Um, in fact, this is not yet open. I'm gonna I'm gonna crack this open. We'll see. We'll take a closer look. There's a way these could open easier. I'll just grab a knife. There we go. So let's crack this guy open. Now there's a couple things I didn't like about these brushes. There you go. First thing is the little protector thing is very flimsy, so it doesn't really protect. In fact, it bends right where the air or right where the brush meets the bristles, um, which is the worst possible place it could bend. Um, the second thing is they don't really have much of a point to them. We get it wet, and it holds a, a bit of a point when it's wet, but um, after using them for a little while, they fray very quickly. And that's not very good for our purposes. Now we could still paint an army with this. That's not that's not the issue. Um, the issue is more that they sold them as professional quality brushes, and maybe it was just the batch that I got because I did get them from the Kickstarter, but they just simply weren't. So I mean, if, I don't know. I mean, you're not going to be able to see this because it's going to be very fairly far away, but um, it's already it was already fraying here. Um, so yeah, I was I was not impressed with these. So when you're investing into brushes, you really want to you kind of want to do your homework a little bit, um, unless you're not you know if you're not spending premium dollars, then okay, don't expect premium product. But if you're spending premium dollars, then um, you probably want to invest into something like a Raphael or a Windsor Newton, and um, I'll explain that when we get there as as to why. So that, that's what these were. They're double sided, which is kind of a cool idea. The idea is you can um, use them for advanced techniques, which we're not going to go over. But, um, at least not right now. But, um, that's besides the point. This is what I started with. I started with a little, a little derpy set like this. Um, this was a dollar, maybe it was a dollar fifty. And the number one thing that I noticed is that the one in the middle holds a pretty good point. Um, so we're actually going to try and use this guy for painting arcade or models. At least the majority of them. 
and um, you know they're not they're not going to be great. They're going to be they're going to work okay, but um, again, these were a dollar fifty, so it holds a point nicely. It's got a lot of bristles. It's got a fairly big belly, um, so for for a dollar, this is probably what I would use. It's synthetic, so it doesn't have the same properties as a sable brush, and there are reasons why you'd use a sable brush, but again, for what, what we've got here, um, that's not too bad. And then these guys I would probably just use for dry brushing. So if you were to start off, I would buy this, $1.50, something similar. Make sure that the that you have at least one brush in it that will um, that looks like it'll probably hold a point, and, um, and start with that. However, the, these are considered to be probably the best um, miniature painting brushes. Now, yes, that's, that's a, an arguable statement, but um, from what I've seen, it's, it's fairly true. The problem with these is that they're incredibly expensive. So we open up this box, and we've got this kit of five, I think it was five brushes, and then I bought, I had bought a standalone one by itself. So this is the number one. Um, this is a Winsor Newton. They're made in England. And it holds a wonderful point, even after this one's been used fairly heavily, and it's perfectly fine. The protectors are very sturdy, very strong, so they do actually protect the bristles. And um, it is made of very, very good quality fibers. Um, so these have been amazing. If you wanted to get brushes that are going to last you a long time, this is what I would get. However, I think this guy by itself cost me twenty or twenty-five dollars, and this set is worth seventy or eighty dollars. It is a, a, a huge investment for paint brushes. When you're starting out, do not get these. You will destroy them because you're not going to be taking care of your brushes quite as well as you need to in order to get the lifespan out of these as your as your money sort of entitles you to. Um, but these are wonderful brushes. Um, I do recommend them for when you get out of the very beginning stages of painting. And into, and, and you want something that you're going to keep for a very long time. Um, when you start looking at better brushes than dollar store brushes, so anything above this, so um, your Citadel brushes are above this, your um, Army Painter brushes are above this, any of the hobby brand brushes, the uh, uh, Privateer Press brushes, they are better than these. When you start looking at anything better than these, you want to be able to keep them for a while. And the way you do that is you pick up something like this. Now this is uh, the Master's Brush Cleaner, and it's basically just a soap. So, it looks a little dirty, that's fine. Uh, but basically what you do to clean your brush, is you take your brush, put it in water, you lather it up. Might need more water than that, but you lather it up. Yeah. To get a good amount of soap on the brush. And then you just swirl around your hand. Now, if this had a bunch of or a bunch of paint in it, you would notice it would all come out of here. So, um, this will greatly increase the lifespan of your brushes. Um, is it worth buying? A, I think this was like fifteen dollars, fifteen dollar, basically bar of soap for dollar store brushes. Probably not. But um, if you are using something, but if you are using something that is expensive. Absolutely. Um, they will. This will increase the lifespan of your brushes tenfold, and um, and it really doesn't take that much extra work. Additionally, before you store your brushes, your nice brushes, um, if you put some of this stuff on it, you just kind of make sure that there's a tip. Put the little cap back on, and um, it will. It'll harden a little bit, but it'll keep your your bristles. Um, together and it'll keep the shape of the brush for a very long time. So the first thing I would do is I would get your dollar store brush set, paint with that, get used to painting, see if it's something that you really are passionate about. Um, if you want to take it up to the next level, then maybe look at getting some Raphael's or Winsor Newton. In my area, Raphael's are less expensive than Winsor Newton, um, but I think um, I prefer the Winsor Newtons. It doesn't really matter. They're both going to be very high quality brushes, but um, that's, that's at a point where you know you want to invest into it. Um, these, the, the dollar store brushes, if they stop working, throw them out, get a new set, doesn't matter. Um, you know, if they're not holding a point, if they're not doing the job you need them to, 
No problem. Not a big deal. The Windsor Newton Series 7, if they stop doing what you need them to, you haven't taken care of them. And that's why I wouldn't recommend new new people get them, because you're basically throwing out money. Like, you really are. Um, you're going to take these these excellent brushes, and, you know, you're, you're not going to, to think about it. It's not going to be something you've consciously done, but maybe you'll leave them in a cup of water, like that, for a couple of minutes. That's going to damage your brush. Maybe you... Um, accidentally leave paint in the brush, that's going to damage your brush. Um, the thing that's going to splay your bristles the most is if you get paint in here. So when paint gets in here and it dries, your bristles start fraying like that. Um, and the with the brush cleaner, you can actually get that paint out of there to a great extent, and it'll revive brushes you thought were totally destroyed. But if you're doing that with expensive you know, twenty, thirty dollar brushes. It's um, it's just really not worth worth the the money unless you have money to burn. In which case, you know, party on, doesn't matter. But um, but yeah, that's basically all I have to say about brushes. Um, so again, start with the the cheap stuff. Move your way up to maybe a, a hobby store brand if you really feel like you want to um, invest into something a bit nicer. So you know, Army Painter, P3, Citadel, it doesn't matter. Any of those brushes are perfectly fine. And um, and then from there, maybe go to the, the nice brushes.